And so if you would like to just talk a little bit about this show in particular and how it came to you, just mm -hmm. sort of like your ideas about it and where you got the artists, and then we can talk individually. So, um, Glory Bee cool. kind of started off so, with me being at Oxbow with one of the artists that's in the show. Um, his name is Pan Kwan Yuan. Um, those four paintings in the front were, are his. And I think being out at Oxbow, like, totally just blew my mind in a lot of ways. My mind was already thinking in this like very new way because when you're in a new space, a new environment with a lot of people that you don't know, you kind of just like get affected in that kind of way. So I was already thinking about my work, but being in that natural environment totally made me start thinking of like, man, I'm around all these amazing artists, what could I bring to Columbus from being at this place? Like who could I work with? So being around him really just, inspired the show because a lot of his paintings kind of have this like very calculating and kind of um, almost mechanical kind of approach to making mm -hmm. but it, they also feel so like kind of like sci-fi-ish like mm -hmm. the way he deals with things is very minimal um, the color schemes that he uses are very pale and it's reminding me a lot of like things that are natural, but they're very ambiguous. Yeah. So um, I asked him first, and he was like very into it. And this is actually his first show, like period. Wow. And he probably has like the most craziest like amount of work I've seen <laughs> ever. Yeah. So after asking him, it all sort of just started like sort of thinking like back to my personal like experience with that kind of. Um, kind of narrative. I was like, my parents are people who collect like weird stones and rocks and gems and things like that. My father, he kind of collected them more as like a trophy kind of thing. So he didn't care about like what they represented. But my mom was like really into knowing about what they were and had this like very spiritual attachment to them. So thinking about it like that, I instantly started thinking of artists that's where it kind of and deal with that kind of like the strangeness. Sculpture over here. She, um, she's a Chicago based artist and she was uh, featured in a lot of really good galleries. She's getting a lot of attention. And I thought of her like older work that dealt with these like face mask sculptures that go on the wall that are made out of concrete and plaster. Mm -hmm kind of like has this like very, um, for me it reminds me of like this like old approach to sculpture, just kind of like old, you see the material as it is, you know what it, I guess, represents and what, it's not like very altered. Mm -hmm. And I think that is like really fascinating. She um, asked me for photos of the floor, mm -hmm. which I thought was really cool because I notice a lot of artists when they do show at Mint, they are really excited because it's like this weird space. Yeah. And, and never... so the space is originally, what's the little bit of the history on the space? Space is a, a meat processing plant, mm -hmm. 17,000 square feet. Um, so there's concrete walls, you've got drains, uh, pipes everywhere. And this um, was the chicken processing room? Yeah. The chicken processing yeah. room, so a lot of Just chickens. A little visual, <laughs> a little visual there. Yeah, yeah. But um, so she was like really interested with the fact that the floor was already had a lot of texture, a lot of dirt, grime on it, and she wanted to see if she could use color in that way. Mm -hmm. So she asked me for the same paint brand that I used and asked me for, um, you know, like what. What kind of things happened in this space just to see if the sculpture could activate with what was going on. Yeah. There's something in this exhibition that I started to piece together to see um, that I found interesting. They really had to do with a lot of the pieces here and it was this element of finding things. Yeah. And so, I, uh, you know, right away your first artist, um, these were monoprints or somehow there's a process yeah. that these are made. 
um, what what became interesting to me about it is that the, the process finds more information in the mark yeah. because there's a mark that is le there's less information and then it's re revealed of more information yeah. and the fact that you that like this artist is using this found space mm -hmm. in their work um, and then the fact that you found this painting on Facebook so I just find I feel like in hey, Steve Dandelion but his, his real name is Chuck but he, he, either or um, He's a Clintonville punk, uh, and he, it's interesting because, like, unlike him, like, the rest of the artists, like, consider themselves, like, very, you know, career-based visual artists, where he doesn't really take it to that, but he enjoys painting, and he makes good work. Um, I don't feel comfortable saying the term outsider artist, because that's not what he is, I don't mm -hmm. think. I hate that term. But... Um, he just posted it on Facebook, like, just like, uh, it wasn't even like a, a photo of the artwork itself, it was like, just like him holding it up, mm -hmm. and there was something about that, like, you know, when you said that, find, the idea of finding it, mm -hmm. I found this, this painting, I guess, mm -hmm. like, on social media, in this weird way, it wasn't on an artist's website, or yeah. taken in a very traditional format, yeah. so it was cool to, like, add him in with maybe someone who's showing in Paris the same day. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so, and that, and then it's like the, um, the application of it is this, I think a breath of fresh air because everything else I think looks so meticulously like, you know, like a lot of um, process. Yeah. And a lot of attention to material and all of that. Whereas this is just like a modest painting I was just, just like straight to the point. So it's kind of mm -hmm. like a breather from all the other content. Yeah. And it just glows in this space. Yeah. Well, those eyes just are really definitively chosen and placed, and mm -hmm. they just really hold a lot of, they hold the whole space, including the wall. Yeah, the wall is like, is like a perfect spot for mm -hmm. it. So if you would, we can walk over to the other side here, and maybe if you want to talk about this, um, Maybe these pieces here. Yeah. And who's the artist? So this piece is uh, titled Ear. Oh, these ones? And um, his name is Joshua Petherick. And I found him just through uh, online, looking through a lot of um, work. And Surprisingly, like there was another piece of his that I wanted to get, but it was just too big and I couldn't figure out how to ship it from Denmark. Yeah. So <laughs> I just thought of um, this piece was making like a really cool conversation with the eels mm -hmm. over there. And I like the scale of it. Yeah. Everything else seems like it's just so, I don't know. It's like a variation in scale in this space, but this is by far like the, the, the smallest work. I noticed at the opening, a lot of people like, kind of walked past it and didn't notice it yeah. and some people because some people are like oh wait what is that so when they walk up to it the reaction was interesting because a lot of people just were so weirded out by the piece you know is this a seashell um seashell and polyurethane resin i'm assuming yeah and attached to it is an earth magnet that's just like holding it to the wall with a mag with a screw and it's probably one of the more contained pieces of the show like it doesn't it's, you know, it's like, it's small, it's not, it just is kind of holding its own, which is sort of a contrast to the rest of the pieces, which sort of command space. Yeah. Um, it was fun using the, uh, the, the way that the room is built, like this weird mm -hmm. little column right here. It's like, the, that's like probably like the only place I could have put that. Yeah. And how's about these, the three series of um, large... Are they prints? Yeah, they're digital C prints. And um, Regina, she, um, I met her at a residency as well. I met her at Acre. Oh, nice. And she's, the residency connections. Yeah, right? Residencies are great. <laughs> but um, yeah, her work at Acre, I didn't really speak to her that much. So it's like I didn't, I didn't really know much about her when I was there, but she recently had a show in Chicago that these were featured in, um, and I like 
really, really enjoyed them. Me, me choosing them, sort of like, they kind of bounce really well with like the colors of the whole show, which is kind of like this almost um, sickly, viral kind of feeling to it. Um, like smear or mi- like microscopic almost, but also like could be huge. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoy that they're very painterly, but they're not on canvas. Like I'm not even sure how she t- created the image. Yeah, they're so shiny. Yeah. And clean, but then like basically pictures of mess, which is a nice contrast. Yeah. I mean, you can see also that there's possibly uh, my... Like, I don't know, so, but, like, it just feels like a photographic process chemical situation. Yeah. But, sure. but on such a clean surface, you know, it, it's a nice, it's almost scientific. Yeah, they, in this, some moments almost look like there is a brush. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I'm really curious as to how she developed this image. But, um, yeah, you know, I... As a painter myself, like I really want, I wanted like a good balance of like things that were kind of recognizable as painting, but maybe they take are taking a different like shape, different form, and then having pieces on the floor. Like I would never do just like a painting show in this space because I think it's like you can utilize like a lot in here. Yeah. Right. To, uh, John Achim. My favorite work over here in the show, I must yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's, a, uh, she's in Columbia, actually, a grad student over there, out in New York. Um, yeah, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to remember how I even, like, oh, I, yeah, it's funny how you can just find artists on, like, you go to school websites uh-huh. and sort of just, like, dive into the current the current people. It's a great idea. Yeah. So I was just like on Columbia's website and I was like looking at the second years. All right. Give them a year to get developed. And then I, was, I found her. Yeah. And it is, I was like, yo, I really have to include you. There was actually two other pieces that were supposed to be in this show, but she was kind of come installed, but she couldn't. So she's like, well, I have this new like installation that I could send you. Now, did they say that their work is coming out of print? Do you know? Because I noticed on the website that there was a number of prints, yeah. and, but flat medium, but also drawing, but they were always installations. So it yeah. was really like all of those things. I'm just curious um, if, there's a f- if, if, you know, if the artist is pulling these out of maybe a print history or installation history. It's really hard to say because like this little piece here is a mono print, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, this is sort of like a print of action, and that looks like a little copper plate. So it's just there's it's yeah, there's interesting. a lot. Of, there's a lot of printing mm-hmm. process happening, and you don't. I like how she's like using, you know, like ceramics, found objects, and printing together in this very like unified kind of way. Yeah. Um, I know. The other pieces that I wanted had print, like there was like a print on the wall, but there was like a piece of uh, fa- of uh, paper that looked like it was a print as well, but it was like lifting off the gr- off the surface. Yeah, you I saw, saw those online. Yeah, really amazing. Yeah, the way that she's like taking these, this process that seems like it's two D into a three dimensional space. Mm-hmm. And making some kind of radical moves, I felt like it just really when you are working 2D and with paper, it's just hard to break that frame. But uh, she had a lot of work that really broke outside of the frame. Yes, yes, and um, you know when when I was installing it, it made me rethink a lot of ways, like how some things could be like combined together to interact in a really new way, like that fishing rod like drilling into the wall and then having to rub that blue powder into that hole and sort of insert it, inserting a fishing rod into it. <laughs> this tile is like acting as a thing that's like wedging that mm-hmm. fishing rod through that hole, creating that bend. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I don't know, the way that she's like making that, the objects or items interact together is very very cool yeah and um so as we're doing this talking 
there's a soundtrack that we're hearing. Um, and from what I recall, that comes with this piece here. If you want to talk a little bit about this work and who's the artist. Uh, the artist is Tiziana Lamilia, and she's from Vancouver. Um, another way I found out about this artist was actually Chloe Siebert. She had a, a show at this space in Canada called Cooper Cole. And I think they both weren't in a show together, but they both were, both have exhibited there before. Okay, yeah. So I found out about her through, through that page. And she was um, another early artist that I like thought about for mm -hmm. this whole show. Um, I think these pieces kind of are very, I guess, key to what the theme is. And I think people um, kind of get the idea when they hear the audio mm -hmm. and this work, along with like the eels and the seashell. It all sort of like starts to come together in that yeah. way. So when I saw these, um, that's another thing with like hanging something on the wall that necessarily is kind of painterly, but also isn't in that contains canvas yeah, for kind sure. of way. Um, there's like a lot of collage going on. There's a lot of like really strange moments of like things that you wouldn't expect to be on that surface. Like those are sea, uh, seahorses mm -hmm. attached to that sculpture there. Um, there's moments of like magazine cutouts. And it's just like, you know, this like the idea of like painting on like aluminum that's like water jet cut mm -hmm. is just like really fascinating to me, that process. That's interesting that it's water jet cut. Yeah being the subject matter that they're dealing with. Also, like the, it, it really goes painterly for me because of the surfaces. Like the surfaces are, it's a painting thing, like matte, shiny, um, brush strokes, line. Mm -hmm. um, so something that I was curious about, and I know we have one more piece to talk about, yeah. um, but the, the title, how, where is uh, that from? The title, <laughs> <laughs> the title yeah. Um, so the so, title, what's the title of the show? The title is Glory Bead, and that came about through kind of like a combination of like a spiritual kind of like feeling, um, a fictional, I guess, object, whether it's a mineral or mm -hmm. a stone, gem, maybe it's like some really sought after, you know, thing mm -hmm. that has this kind of spiritual feeling to it. And I was thinking of my mother at the time, like how she um, knows all of these like stones that have meanings. Right. And so I was thinking like, well, maybe the show, something that feels very um, rare and maybe it exists in a very like, place in a place that's hard for it to be like found mm -hmm. like maybe like deep ocean you would find this thing mm -hmm. or maybe something you would find buried under a beach mm -hmm. or something like that mm -hmm. so that's like the title or the title mostly nice. came from. I love the title. The title is fun. Very I nice. love it. Um, so maybe we can look really quickly at these works on canvas um, and so this was these were your first pieces that you chose. Yeah. So if you want, so, but, and you saw this artist making these works in the studio. These ones, no. Oh, okay. These ones were made. These are different. These ones were made during, um, I would say these are new, but they're very similar to what he was kind of making already. Canvas was something that he just, he was using muslin at all. Oh, all right. So when he was using muslin there, it just felt... Like he was like, man, this material is really nice, but I kind of like the way canvas looks and feels. Like the idea of having like something that's not like touched, no no marks. Right. So that idea of like raw canvas being exposed. Right. He was really fascinated by that. So, and I think I was like from working next to me because I was using a lot of like raw, oh, yeah. raw yeah, canvas. Absolutely. So. And is it a print process or a painting there is, process? There is, it's like, a mix of both. This, okay, a combination. Similar to like, what I was doing there. It's just like doing like a monotype print and mm -hmm. then immediately just like um, painting over things. Make a lot of different uh, applications wow. to it. A lot of it's like ink, acrylic. 
Yeah, and the bleed is the great. Bleeding. It's so. There's like moments of. Um, I like how these kind of act as some kind of like magnifying the image. Yeah. And I was like really drawn to that, that idea of like, find, like you said, finding yeah. information or an object that you normally cannot see. Right. But is, but is definitely there. Yeah. And seeing that through painting is like really, really cool. To yeah, me. absolutely. There's so much revealed in the pigment too that you see browns and blues that like here, it's more like this is the actual speck revealed, whereas yeah. here it's like, then I'm going to show you like the depth of the speck. Yeah. It's nice. Okay. Yeah, and that's like happening over here too in these like three strokes. So I like, I really love just how he just made like a, ser a series of paintings that go really well together, but they're just like treated differently. Um, and the scale is really nice too. He's always worked this size. Something that's like really contained, but still pretty big. <laughs> so, and then we've got one more piece around the corner mm -hmm. and um, we'll have a look at that. And who is the artist that made the little sculpture? Uh, his name is Benjamin Reese. Benjamin Reese, okay. And he... Uh, and so let's give Ken a sec. <laughs> okay, so, and... Benjamin Reese? Yeah, Benjamin Reese is another Oxbow artist. He was actually on my way out. I was like, you want to be in the show in Columbus? He's like, yeah, I would love that. And um, his work is very, very different than most people that I've seen. Most of the time, he has these small drawings that he does that kind of feel like they're like super mechanical, but also mixing like figure and I guess um, some kind of like fictional narrative with like technology. But his sculptures are these like really strange, ambiguous forms that kind of deal with like space in a really yeah and weight way. it's a thing about a maybe weight it, it this is a really great piece to walk in I, when i first came into the show yeah. um to come into this like i i was trying to think of the name of this wall color and i could just think like mauve like it's just this like weird color and then mm -hmm. this little being being in front of it um as kind of claiming this whole entry into the entire exhibition this yeah. is almost like the if you just imagined it as a closed shell, this is like the outside of the shell, this little thing. Right. And so it was just a really nice little piece to see when you first come in and then go around and see all the different work. Um, yeah. It's a really sweet little piece. And I was thinking like with this box here, um, I like how when you first come in, you hear that sound. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like all the work that is um, on opposite side of the wall, it kind of creates this like, builds, I guess, like this kind of like anticipation because you don't know what is on the other side. You mm -hmm. see this, this is kind of like the gateway to the whole show. Mm -hmm. And even though you aren't totally consumed by the audio, it's definitely responding to this. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was really drawn to this piece because it's, it has, it's very, embryonic in ways mm -hmm. it's very you're not really sure if it's even of this world mm -hmm. and i guess like that's the whole theme of this show is like things that seem to be like are those even on <laughs> is that here is yeah. that is that was that like from a long time ago you know so the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Such a great title. <laughs> Is that the title of it? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Very nice. Well, thank you for showing us around your exhibition. Thank you. Had a great turnout. <laughs> um, the closing is uh, January 2nd. Okay, cool. And, and then Chloe, we'll be back for the next show. Oh, will Chloe be here for the yeah, closing? Yeah, right. she's going to swing through. It, Very so. cool. Sweet. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Glad you guys did.